Today we're going to talk about the long history of the relationship between Argentina and Italy and Italian immigration to Argentina and how that history has shaped what is modern Argentina. And the best place I can think of around here in Mendoza to do that is out at the uh, Bodega La Rural, a winery out on the sticks. We're going to hop on a bus and head out there. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. All right, so we are off the bus on our way down to Bodega La Rural. And uh, it's right down this, this road here. I'm gonna take a little walk. Uh, and while we're there, while we're on the way, we might as well talk a little bit about, uh, about some history of Italians. Um, Italians, specifically Italians here in Mendoza, but also just Italians in general in Argentina. Because, you know, it's very long, very long and storied history as most things are here in Argentina. On this road there is no sidewalk also, because we're kind of out in the sticks, out in the rural areas. So we're going to try real hard not to get run over here on this road. You know, I always say that, crossing the street, try not to get run over. I've said it in probably every video. And you know what? We've been here for almost three months, and we were successful so far. So far, successful. Fingers crossed that we haven't been run over in Argentina. Anyway, so what are we talking about? We're talking about Italians in Argentina. So Italians didn't really start showing up here in Argentina until after Argentine independence in like the early 1800s. Uh, because basically while this was a Spanish colony in, you know, from like the 1500s all the way up to the early 1800s, uh, the only immigrants that came were really Spanish because it's a colonial empire. Um, they're, they, these are colonial holdings. And you had to basically have like special permission if you weren't Spanish to come here. So there were just a few, you know, you'd have a few Italians, but they were all like professionals, um, lawyers, engineers, architects, things like that, who got special permission from the Spanish crown to come over here. So not just anybody would be able to come over here. You'd have to be somebody and you'd have to have a real reason to come here. Um, and you'd have to get permission from the royals. So not a lot of Italians coming through, but that all really changed with uh, uh, Argentine independence. So once Argentina was independent from Spain, more um, immigration started to happen. Not so much right at first, because if, um, if you'll remember from some of the other videos that we've done, like the video about San Martin, Argentine independence was basically followed by a long period of more than a few decades of civil war. Lots of fighting going on here to sort of decide what the future of the nation was really going to be. And you don't really have modern Argentina, what you would consider modern Argentina, until uh, around 1860. And at that point, that's when the real immigration boom started happening. Now, originally, you had a lot of northern Italians coming here uh, in like the early 1860s. And a lot of them settled over into the other parts of Buenos Aires, not here in Mendoza. Or, I'm sorry, the other parts of Argentina, not here in Mendoza. They'd settle in Buenos Aires or Cordoba because if you remember from our first video, about uh, Mendoza and the earthquake. There was a huge earthquake here in 1861. They were rebuilding the city, but also there was really no uh, way to get out here, uh, no easy way to get out here because there was no railroad. The railroad didn't show up here connecting um, this part of Argentina over to the rest of Argentina until like 1885. So that's when you really had a huge boom of Italian immigrants was after 1885. And interestingly, uh, the gentleman who 
founded and built this uh, this bodega, this winery that we're going to. Uh, he was Italian, uh, Philippe Rutini, and uh, or Felipe Rutini, and he arrived here in 1889, so like just after the railroad arrived here, and he founded the winery here in 1895. So within 10 years of the railroad arriving, you had Italians here out in Mendoza founding wineries like this one. And actually, this is it right here. If you see these sort of like uh, beige colored buildings on the right, this is the uh, Bodega La Rural. So we're here and uh, we can head in and see exactly what's going on. Now, the cool thing about this place is it's not just a winery. They also have a museum. I think I mentioned the wine museum. And there's a lot of like old wine equipment um, and I'm imagining a lot of stuff about the history of not just this uh, establishment but also the history of like winemaking in Argentina and maybe even some history about Italians coming to Argentina we hope either way it's something that I wanted to see since we're here in Mendoza definitely wanted to see uh, wine country before we go in, here's Museo del Vino San Felipe. Like I mentioned, Felipe Rutini was the guy who founded this. Underneath it's a little scratched off, but what it says is Obra del Doctor Rodolfo Reina Rutini. And that was uh, Felipe's son, I believe, who uh, started the museum here. This looks like the entrance is right over here. Let's go take a look. So here it is, Museo del Vino. Bodega La Rural. Okay, so the tour here starts in 20 minutes, but before, we can just take a look around, see like inside this winery, there's this great picture of here of like what I guess it looked like way, way back in the day. This is really cool. Some old wine equipment. Of course, we're gonna get the tour in Spanish. I'm only going to understand about 50% of it, but that's going to be like pretty much everything we've done here in Argentina for the last three months. It's very cool to be inside this old building with uh, all of this like old winemaking equipment, these gigantic casks over here. Look at these things. Really very cool. Very, very cool. I guess while we're waiting, we can talk a little bit more about, uh, oh, well, first, I want to poke my head out here because the, the grapes are growing right out here. See them? That's so cool. There's the, there's the fields right there with all the grapes growing. So I guess we can, uh, we can talk a little bit more about uh, Italians in Argentina. Where were we when we were talking about that? Uh, it was post-Argentine independence and Italians started coming here in like after 1860, 1861 roughly. And now in Italy, there were actually a lot of, um, there were a lot of problems going on during the 1800s um, in the wake of the Napoleonic Wars. Uh, in Europe, there was a big restructuring of like everything in Europe, and there was a process, long and kind of uh, messy process of Italian unification, which lasted for many decades. And there were what was essentially a civil war happening amongst multiple factions trying to decide should Italy be unified, should how should Italy be unified. And in the midst of all of this, it caused great social upheaval, great economic upheaval. Um, but there was also a large uh, demographic population boom, which led to overpopulation. Too many people, not enough economic opportunities. And that, of course, is the uh, it's a perfect combination for, um, for migration. So you had a lot of Italians, especially Italians from the south 
in the second half of the 1800s leaving and Italy you know the Italian uh, government was actually encouraging people to to leave basically because of the overpopulation so you ended up with a lot of southern Italians coming here to Argentina not just Argentina but other places the United States specifically also um, in that time in that time period in the late 1800s it's interesting around here you see sort of an Argentine version of Italian food everywhere um, you see pasta here in Argentina a lot of pasta you see a lot of pizza you see milanesas which is like a breaded fried um, very thin steak and uh, topped with various different things one of the ones that you see often in almost every restaurant I've been to they have a Milanese Neapol Neapolitano it's like a Neapolitan right from Naples the southern part of Italy because you had a large immigration coming from the southern part of Italy what's really interesting is in other parts of Latin America um, they don't really have pasta and they, they'll have you know some pasta now and they'll have some pizza probably because pizzas just become popular all over but not like it is here here pasta and pizza are like a huge part of the culture the food culture here in Argentina um, of course they put their own spin on it it's their own like versions of you know old Italian recipes I find that really interesting another thing that uh, you see here in Argentina that you don't see in a lot of other places around here uh, we mentioned in a previous video that sherba mate is very uh, important and very popular here in Argentina but while it's popular here and also in like Paraguay, Uruguay, Brazil, places around here um, what's really popular here in Argentina is coffee specifically like Italian style coffee drinks um, you see that also in Brazil because there's a large population of people of Italian descent in Brazil as well and Brazil is a major coffee producer but here in Argentina if you go to any cafe in the morning you're gonna see people sitting out drinking some sort of Italian style coffee drink and anywhere you go here in Argentina to any cafe they're gonna have multiple different kinds of um, Italian style coffee drinks cappuccino espresso Cortada, which is like mostly coffee with a little bit of cream. Uh, they have a lagrima, which is like mostly milk with a little bit of coffee. You can get a cafe con leche, which is basically a latte. And um, you see it all over the place. Another thing you see all over here in Argentina is Italian surnames. And I always thought that was interesting. Um, when I was growing up, the little that I knew about Argentina, and I didn't really know much, but I did realize that most of the people who I knew from Argentina, or at least whose names I knew from Argentina, they were Italian names. I always thought that was really interesting. Uh, there were, well, my two, my two real touch points for that early on were uh, basketball players, specifically Manu Ginobili and Andres Nocioni, both Italian surnames. And I always found that, thought that was very interesting that you had Italian surnames in a Latin American country in South America. And of course, doing a little more research into it, now I know why. contarles un poquito de la historia de la bodega. La misma se ha fundado por el año 1885. La creó Felipe Rutini, era de Italia, vino acá y plantó 7 hectáreas de Cabernet Sauvignon. Esta plantación no es la original, se replanta por el año 1973. Esta máquina va a girar a mucha velocidad y eso lleva a que el granito de la uva se libere del racimo. El grano va 
pasa una de y es ahí donde continúa todo el proceso de producción. Vamos a ingresar y se los explico, ¿sí? Vengan por acá, por favor. colonial times they would collect the grapes in these large bags they'd put them into here and they'd stomp on them with their feet then they would ferment them in these casks here like this and in the modern era they'd use these baskets to collect the grapes and they'd ferment them here or stomp them in these barrels so some of these older machines, these are what they were using in like the early 1900s to grind the grapes and then press them in machines like this. And this uh, vineyard apparently, I think from what she said, is the like oldest continually operating vineyard. And over here, this is like an old wine bottle. How they used to bottle their wine back in 1923 and they would have them store them in these large barrels like this you can see the bodega la rural from back in like the early 1900s very cool there's a lot of really really cool machinery and and old antique equipment in here the the tour has moved on but we're going to take a quick quick second just to catch up and talk and look at all of this stuff. I mean, all the way down there, you can just see everything. It's very cool. It's very cool to see all of this stuff and see, you know, even this pre-colonial or this colonial era stuff that, of course, they weren't using here. It's part of the museum and it's really interesting. But um, let's move on because there is a wine tasting happening. There's a wine tasting happening, and we want to taste some wine. Because visiting a museum is one thing, but being able to do some day drinking on delicious wine, well, that'll be fun too. These are all the different types of wine they make, and this wine, Trumpeter, I've been told about this wine uh, 
from friends of mine from Argentina that it's sort of like a good mid-priced wine, the kind of thing you would bring with you if you were going to like a barbecue or asado at a friend's house. You'd bring it with you to, to give to them, you know, as a, as a thank you for hosting you. And uh, I had no idea that it actually came from, from this vineyard. That's really cool. Very, very cool. And I've seen it. I've seen Trumpeter all over the place in, uh, in Argentina, so I imagine it's pretty popular. I guess my friend was right. So we're done with the tour. That was nice. That was very good, actually. Um, got to do a little wine tasting at the end. And uh, interestingly, if you're ever planning on visiting this place, there's a ch uh, charge to get in. It was 9,900 pesos, which is, uh, with the exchange rate right now, probably about $8, I think. But then you can use that as a credit at the end towards uh, purchasing wine from them. So good to do, uh, definitely worth it. And we're gonna head back and walk back down the road here, try and catch the bus. One cool thing is uh, I ran into some people on the tour who spoke English which doesn't happen very often here in Argentina, or at least it hadn't happened so far very often. Uh, there were a few people from, uh, uh, from Canada who spoke English, and then also some people from here in Argentina who spoke English. So I got to, I got to speak a lot of English, and uh, it's always good because I feel like I've been here for almost three months, and I haven't really spoken English very much, except for like maybe speaking over the internet with some friends and family back home. And... Uh, Sometimes it's, sometimes it's nice to speak English to, to people, you know, other than just like talking to this camera and talking to everybody who's watching the videos. But that's basically just me talking to myself on the side of a road in Argentina like a crazy person. So uh, it was nice to talk to, uh, to people and feel sane again. Anyway, let's head back out to this town, we'll catch a bus, catch a bus back to the city. As we're walking back, back over to the bus stop here down this road, talk a little bit more about like the experience, I think, of Italian immigrants. And you know, the experience for Italian immigrants here uh, in Argentina was, uh, you know, likely very different from the experience of uh, specifically Spanish immigrants. And that's just mainly because, you know, Spanish immigrants here, especially the ones coming during the, uh, during the European immigration boom, in the late 1800s and the early 1900s, they spoke Spanish. And everybody here spoke Spanish. And so it's a lot easier for them to sort of uh, blend in and, um, and sort of uh, uh, acclimatize themselves to the, uh, to the situation here in Argentina. Whereas, you know, an Italian immigrant, Italian and Spanish are similar languages. They're both Latin based, but you're really having to learn a whole new language. and a lot of Italians um, just sort of uh, they would they would form communities, you know, um, diaspora communities, like did Germans and like did uh, uh, European Jews and and also Muslims who who immigrated here. We have videos on all of those. I'll put the links down in the description. Um, but it's a very similar situation, except. In the for the case of Italians, there were just a lot more of them um, coming, and so their influence culturally on Argentina is a lot greater than some of these other groups that came during that uh, during that immigration boom. And a lot of the Italians that came, they just sort of did what they knew how to do in Italy. One of the interesting things here is, of course, they've been making wine here all the way back into the Spanish colonial days in uh, our video about the Jesuits, where we went out to that Jesuit ranch up in uh, Jesus Maria in Cordoba. They were making wine there. That was, that was the thing they were doing. They were growing grapes. They were making wine. They were selling that wine on the market in order to be able to purchase things that they couldn't make themselves there on the ranch. But that wine they were making is very different from the wine that uh, they make here in Argentina today. The different breeds of grapes, like they were using different strains the Italians that came over, a lot of them actually brought uh, grapes, you know, seeds over with them that they could then plant here in Argentina. And so you had whole new strains of grape. Whole new strains of grape 
but they would grow here in Argentina. And they also had different techniques, more advanced winemaking techniques, that they just sort of brought that knowledge over with them when they came here and then purchased what they would need to get that system up and running here. You can see it in the sort of colonial era winemaking that we showed off in that museum. And then of course, the uh, early modern era, like in the late 1800s and the early 1900s, a lot of it became mechanized using those large wooden presses and machines. Um, so they really jump-started the winemaking industry here. And that's specifically important, um, not just for Argentina as a whole, but for Mendoza specifically, because Mendoza has a climate where, you know, like I mentioned, like I mentioned in some previous videos, it is the high desert, but they managed to set up irrigation networks so they would be able to grow, um, you know, agriculture here. But specifically before the earthquake, they were mostly growing grain here. And after the devastating earthquake in 1861, a lot of the farms were really never able to rebound. And so in 1885, when they were rebuilding the city still, and they connected the railroad from the rest of Buenos Aires, or from the rest of Argentina, and allowed a lot of those uh, European immigrants, specifically Italian immigrants, to make their way out here into an area that had a similar climate to where they were from in Italy, in southern Italy, and allowed them to be able to grow wine out here in this climate. It was almost a, um, like a perfect confluence of circumstances that allowed the Argentine wine industry to flourish. And today, you know, Argentine wine is world famous. And I think it's because of the confluence of events. The Italian immigration, the earthquake, which, uh, which pretty much leveled the city of Mendoza, having to rebuild the, uh, the railroad coming out here in 1885. All of those things together, you end up with a situation where they grow great grapes and they make great wine. And now everybody around the world pretty much knows about Argentine Malbec from, uh, from Mendoza specifically. And Mendoza is really one of the great wine cities uh, in the whole world. More than just uh, wine and food and coffee, you can see the sort of the influence of Italian Argentine culture here, specifically in the Italian Argentine communities that were created and the associations that were created. And those to this day, they still exist. And a lot of the signs of that are all over Argentina in almost, well, yeah, in all the cities that I've been so far, Buenos Aires, Cordoba, and Mendoza, there is an Italian hospital because these Italian Argentine societies um, were able to fund hospitals, the creation of hospitals for the community. So in Buenos Aires, one of the probably best hospitals is the Italian hospital, and same here in Mendoza. There's also an Italian language school, Dante Alighieri School, that has locations all over in cities all over Argentina. Uh, there was one right outside of Córdoba. There's one here, I believe, down in Godoy Cruz, outside of Mendoza. So there are still places where they're keeping Italian culture alive and uh, teaching the Italian language here in Argentina because the Italian language has largely been lost. Um, you know, the majority language, of course, here is Spanish. And like we mentioned uh, in our videos about uh, Villa General Belgrano and the German influence uh, in Argentina, there's still people who speak German down there. And it's like an older form of German uh, because of the, you know, because it was a diaspora that came here almost a century ago. But they, they do still speak some German there, like in, in households. Whereas I don't think Italian is spoken very much in people's households anymore in Argentina even though people you know, still maintain other parts of the culture. But there is a movement with a lot of schools that teach uh, Italian language here in Argentina. Well, like magic, we are back. Back where we started, in uh, the city of Mendoza. And uh, that was really a good trip. I really enjoyed going out there to, to see that and take the tour and got to try a little wine. It's very nice. And uh, hopefully we all learned a little bit more about uh, 
Italians, Italian Argentines, and the Italian history of the heritage of Italians here in, in Argentina. Now, really funny thing happened when I was sitting at that bus stop there, waiting out in, um, you know, out by the uh, the bodega, the winery. Uh, this guy comes up to me and he starts talking to me, and he's saying, "Hey, you know, I, I saw you walking along the street there, and I saw you filming. Uh, you know, are you filming for YouTube?" And I said, "Yeah, yeah." We started chatting, and then. Uh, eventually I realized he speaks way better English than my Spanish, so we started talking in English and uh, He's a really nice guy. His name was Diego. He owned uh, he owns a farm out there like right next to um, the, the bodega where They grow olives and he makes olive oil and so we started chatting about that and Just sitting there at the bus stop and then he says You don't need to take the bus. I'm going right into the center like come. I'll give you a ride so I just hopped in his truck and he gave me a ride back to the city. He didn't have to take the bus. It was really, really nice. And I've, I don't know if I've mentioned this. I mean, I've probably mentioned it in some video. I, I can't really remember. But the the people here in Argentina are, are super, super nice. Everybody's been, like, really, really nice. Um, and and just having, a, having, you know, that happen, to have some, some person who I didn't even know just came up, be really friendly give me a ride all the way back up into the city um, and we chatted the whole way about um, about the video I was making about Italy and you know Italian uh, heritage in Argentina turns out he his family is uh, is of Italian descent so his ancestors and his, his family they came from Italy so um, it's just it was a fitting it was a fitting end to the video I think um, so I think that's probably where we're gonna end it and uh, I guess if uh, Diego, if you see this, uh, thanks for the ride. And uh, for everybody else, uh, I really hope you enjoyed the video. There's going to be more to come, so stay tuned.